Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. The recent hotfix has really shaken up the meta. For anyone who isn't caught up, here are the changes. Back alley bar has hurt Seraphine's consistency. Fallen Reckoner was a smack on the wrist for Red Gwen, and three nerfs geared to slow down Vayne Aatrox. Let's see what the early impact of these changes are, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. The standard variation of Bandle Seraphine has taken a dip in win rate. We'll have to see if this is where she stays, or if she plans on moving out to a new region in order to stay relevant. The Fallen Reckoner nerf was definitely just a light tap, as variations of Red Gwen remain staple in the meta. If you're an enjoyer of the deck, it's not time to panic yet. Even after triple nerfs, Vayne Aatrox seems like it's not bleeding out or anything, it appears to remain a strong deck, just very much a shell of its former glory. A lot of players have instead transitioned to Kane Aatrox, so keep that in mind moving forward. I want to cover the deck that's shaping the meta, a new counter that came up to keep the best deck in check, and a new Dark Horse deck that came out of nowhere. So let's start with the best deck of this patch, Lulu Jinx. With a win rate of 56.18% and a play rate of 5.71%, it is absolutely dominating the meta. As you can see by the matchup spread, it does very well into Red Gwen, Zed Hecarim Ephemerals, Yasuo Katarina, and Fizz Gwen combo. Now the worst matchups for this deck seem to be pings and easy to access removal. So Twisted Fate Swain with all their one damage, Vagar Nora, same deal, Echo Zillion, pretty much the same thing. Get to use the Mystic Shot, get to use Thermo Beam if you run it, the Hexite Crystal. Nice AoE removal goes a long way against this matchup. And rounding out the bad matchups is Heimer Jace. So again, a lot of Bandle, PNZ, Noxus, and Shadow Isles control. Okay, so talking about the list specifically, we have Triple Poro Cannon, Bird the Bell Ringer, nice to get that chime, especially if it hits Lulu or Jinx, really high value. Jury Rig, which has um, value with the Poro Cannon, right? Some synergy there. We want to have a good mix of discard activators and discard targets. That way we can get a lot of pressure from our early hands, dump our hand as much as possible, and then get Jinx out, get Jinx leveled, and win the game through multiple rockets. So we have the Yordle Squire able to give us a nice little target, and she's a good card as well. We can just like tiny shield the Lulu later, make her a bit stickier. Uh, Zonai Urchin for draw, Boom 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 to generate a discard target. We run Flame Chompers themselves too, because they're really, really good at Lulu synergy. So we attack with Lulu and the Flame Chomper. The Chomper becomes a 4-4. Lulu will swing as well. Get a lot of pressure, right? Being able to have a 4-4 Challenger is really, really strong starting on attack turn 3. Triple Pokey Stick. Double Rummage to help get out cards we don't want or to turbo level the Jinx. Squeaker, another discard activator. Can play around the Mech Yordle sometimes as well. Get excited as a finish. Lulu Jinx, of course, and Sneezy Biggle Dust for those hands that we go wide. We run multiple Poros. We get a bunch of different things down, and they're all created cards, so they get the plus two, plus two bonus, and we can do really big lethal swings. And that's it for the quick deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. All right, for the showcase game, we have a Kale deck. Kale Yasuo, gonna be a little bit slow. They don't have like pings or like one damage removal, but they do have stuns, which is another good mechanic against us. So we're going to go ahead and pitch the Pokey Stick. I don't think they're gonna play anything that has one HP exactly. So we can do Squire, uh, Boom Ba Boon, Squeaker. We want to see our champion pressure as soon as possible. And also get generated cards out, because now we have a Sneezy Biggle Dust. Here we go, tiny shield, yep. The Mourned. Alright. That's just plus one for the Yasuo level. Let's go ahead and do Boom Ba Boon. Getting our Lulu here is really good for us, because now on defense three, we can go ahead and use Squeaker to get our Chompers down, and then play Lulu on attack four. So our hand just kind of works itself out here. Yeah, we can Squeaker, Chomper. Go ahead and do... Mecha Forcer's really good. Smash and Dash really good. Yeah, let's do the Mecha Forcer. Like the additional protection. Mm -hmm. I will mourn you. And the reason why we didn't just do a Pokey Stick this turn is because they're Targon Ionia with 4 mana, so they could do Pale Cascade, Twin Disciplines, you know, all that kind of stuff. So Pokey was never the correct option here. We're just going to go ahead and try to push our win con, which is pressure, and get our synergies out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and play Lulu. 
Main problem with Lulu is if she gets Concussive Palmed or something. Because they are playing a stun deck. And then we're going to try to get Mecha Forcer out, get the Jinx out. Yeah, there's the Concussive Palm. Um, okay, let's try to do Pokey as a response to force them in at this turn. Because I'm okay. We're just cycling now. If we do get the twin, then we'll see it early, right? Before we lose combat or anything. Cool, Pale Cascade. Makes sense. I knew they were on. That's why Pokey last turn was not good. Alright. Swing, swing, swing. Pressure board. Now they're on one mana, so they can't get out of it very easily. Yep. Yep. Alright, we're gonna go nice and wide and then do an open attack with Sneezy Biggle Dust. Wyvern. Let's go ahead and do Poro Cannon Flame Chomper. And then do a Poro. That way we have an elusive blocker for this Mourned. Yep, and then we'll just take this. Three to face is completely okay. We don't have to block that. Pal Cascade number two, sure. Alright, I do believe they are in trouble now. So I'm going to do Mecha Forcer. And then pass. Here we go. We have one of our win cons, which is wide Sneezy Biggle Dust. So I'll go ahead and lead with that. Swing Mecha Forcer. Lulu. Flame Chomper. Uh, we're going to just a 4-4. Four -four. We do like that. And then also swing here, here. And that is currently threatening lethal. We have the spell shield on the Lulu, which is our most damage. They don't have ping, so I don't really care about tiny shield right now. We can just leave it in hand. And then they have six mana to work with. If they do uh, just a concussive, that's still not enough. Because we're threatening six plus six right here. So a concussive would only block four damage at most. They have to be on, like, double Steel Tempest. Cool. Got him. Okay, so the next deck I want to cover is the deck that has come up just to beat Lulu Jinx. And that is Vegar Nora. With a win rate of 54.3% and a play rate of 2.56%, it is doing very well for itself and has other good matchups across the board. So, it beats Ash LeBlanc, Zed Heck, Swain Nora, Red Gwen, Jinx Draven discard aggro, and also there's the Lulu Jinx matchup. It beats Lulu Jinx 64% of the time, so that is very good, and it also has positive matchups against other aggro, and even some control and midrange in there, so this might be a staple in the meta. Alright, so let's talk about the list specifically. We have two Quietus, one of the best cards in the game, able to kill a unit with two or less attack or destroy an equipment if equipment is still relevant that can hit the Aatrox decks. We have Contrologist to generate us more control tools or maybe some draw, whatever we need at the time. Glimpse Beyond's a good draw card. Junk Construct puts a mysterious portal in the top four of our deck on pull, so whenever we draw a card that has the portal on it, we summon a random two or three cost. If your board's full, then you create a zero mana copy of it. We have Nora, who has the portal synergy, very good stuff, can make more portals, summon a bunch of random units, and then she makes really strong units when she's leveled. Um, Pokestick, one of our premium control tools, it is a ping one, and it also draws one, so really nice do everything card, and again, this is going to be a reoccurring theme this meta, is that uh, deal one to anything, or deal one to multiple things, is a very good card to have in your deck. So, when possible, you want to include things like Pokestick, Vile Feast, Make it rain, things like that. Um, Mystic Shot's also still a okay. So we have Twisted Catalyzer next. We're going to play a little bit of Darkness Synergy in here because we do play uh, Vagar. Next we have Triple Vile Feast. Again, very good. Drain one, summon a body. Two box for when the opponent has to fully develop, play like three or four things. We just box, kill them all. Vagar creates a darkness and then also amps up darkness's power over the course of the game. You want to play these as much as possible to get him leveled, and you might have a little bit of a top end win con versus some slower decks. Otherwise, just resolving one or two darkness is good enough versus aggro. Next, we have Portal Palooza. This is a draw one, plus put some portals in there. Really good. You can just come up with a bunch of chump blockers. Next, we have Ishtali Sentinel, which is a lifesteal card. Pretty much a death sentence for aggro if you resolve this and she gets one strike in, GG. Uh, against mid-range and control, 
well, she also turns the darkness into direct damage to the enemy nexus. So that is very good for us there. That also doubles up on the Vagar level up points. So we want to use each Tali Sentinel whenever possible. Next, we have two mini morph to deal with some really big um, units that are being developed that don't have spell shield on them. Or we can ping off spell shield with like file feast and then do mini morph during combat. You know, things like that. It's also super nice. Next, we have vengeance for... You know, same reason, big single target units that we want to get rid of. And then we have Descent Auto, which is an AoE board removal that transitions our darkness from single target to a full wipe. Very nice, super good with Vagar as well. And that's it for this quick deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. Alright, for the example game, we have the premier deck of the last patch, Seraphine Bandle. Alright, so let's go ahead and get rid of Vengeance. We could probably keep Pokey, Conch, and Nora, right? Do they play anything that's pokey stickable? Pharaoh's Financier, their own Contrologist. I guess it's fine, especially with the draw synergy with my portals. I do know that like Nora's just gonna get Mystic Shot or High Noted like immediately though, so she's never super safe. So we're gonna have to do um, our Conch. Ah, boom. We have Quietus, that's really good. Passage Unearned. Obliterate all units that were summoned but not played. Unto Dusk. Magical Journey. Plant a mysterious portal randomly in the top four. I actually kind of like the passage unearned because if they play bar and then like summon a bunch of units that were not, you know, not played, they do direct summons. Then we can just AOE remove them all in their own conch. All right. Uh, we can pass. Yeah, because I want to pokey their conch. Vengeance. Okay. Seraphine, that is getting quietest immediately. So much to do. Not surprised. Just gonna go ahead and whip that out. We could honestly go Vagar on four, floating three. So we have enough to use darkness if we want to. That's honestly not a bad idea either, and I can just save the Pokey Stick. My hand is currently working, so I don't need this yet, anyways. Let me go ahead and get this down. And they'd have to be on a combination of spells to remove him, because he's a bit higher HP, so we could bait some removal and then play Nora a bit safer. That could work too, you know. Dark Bulb Acolyte. Deal two to an enemy. Um okay. We can just shoot it. Get that darkness in. We have another one later. It's gonna be three AoE if Vagar lives. Oh, they are in a combination of spells. Top deck. Mystic? Yeah. And then they're gonna darkness them next turn? Yeah, okay. Oh no, they did. And they top deck the high note. Kinda rude. Okay. We'll go ahead and pass. We have another conch, we have a Nora. Drum solo, interesting. Yeah, they're gonna cost less. Huh? To the world below. Yep. Conch. Black Spear, Shape of Fear, Magical Journey. Mmm. Mmm, we'll do Black Spear. That way we might be able to like revenge kill an Ezreal or something later. They reduce their cost permanently? That's so annoying actually. Let's just go ahead and do each Tally Sentinel. Our Nora's never safe. Sentinel. That gives us a darkness this turn too. Or if they play a little proactive, you know, and kill something, then we have our Black Spear turned on. That can snipe Victor on summon, that can snipe Ezreal. Uh, Seraphine. That's a really nice card to get. Mm. Yeah, we can full swing. Because I am curious about this. What you plan on doing? Caustic Rift. Oh no. That's spooky. Okay, we'll darkness. Make the darkness your own. Oh dear. 
I bet Bar is gonna come down here. Bar on seven. Yep. Uh, let's do junk. Darkness that. That's fine. We can also Nora. Okay, so now we're on Passage Unearned or Black Spear Mana. Okay, cool. Salvage Scrap. That's neat. Boom ba boon. That's fine. I don't really have to do anything until they attack call because they can safely attack. Oh, huh, they don't feel like it. They could attack with Back Alley Barkeep literally for free. They just weren't feeling it. So let's do Descent Auto. Now we have a zero cost darkness and it's AoE damage. And they're playing into it for some reason. That was a silly call. So let's go ahead and darkness. Uh, that should level Vega, right? Two, four, six. Yep. Keeping our resources. Nice. Should be pretty annoying for them. Swing. Uh, yeah, we can just full swing. Probably gonna cloud stance my death auto sure. All right, so we can do. Oh, hey yo. They're still playing cards. Double pokey. Let's do a pokey of our own. Keep the death and auto alive. A bonk. Ez. Ezreal. Hmm. We could play a slow turn. Depends on what they do, I suppose. Okay. Pokey. Vengeance. Do I care about denying the Mystic Shot? I guess not, right? So we just Pokey this. Then we can play Conchologist. Control gets shot, and then we do Black Spear on the Ez. Conch. Wallop is good. Let us take a peek at life beneath the waves. Another back alley bar. Yeah, this is getting so fun. So very fun. I think we're just going to Passage Unearned it. I guess we could wait. We could wait for the Mystic Shot to be called. Aftershock. Mystic Shots. Only puts her to one. Not even dead yet. Okay. Firing. Play Vagar then. Yeah, this guy should be much safer now. And the grip shot, yep. Sounds about right. Trixie Tentacles, not my vile piece, anything but that. Alright. Another Desonata? Oh, that's actually really cool. So we could darkness this, and then Destin Auto and do AoE, right? Hmm. Ideal damage to all enemy targets. That's really cool. We have enough mana for that. So Darkness will put Ezreal down the one, then we Destin Auto target Nexus, and then that will be AoE. You oh, I'm not my Destin Auto. Hey, that was my plan for the turn. How could you? Okay, I guess we'll each Tali Sentinel instead. I will shape death as easily as clay. Contrologist, yep. 
We could honestly just wall up the Ezreal. We don't have to darkness it. If I get a new one round start though, start created darkness. Okay. We'll just finish him off then. Maybe you can swing first. Uh, yeah. Just with these. Flash of Brilliance. Ah, oh, here we go. Ezreal's gonna start shooting. 10 million miles an hour. Flash of Brilliance hit Suttering Stong Spinnerman. Alright. That's a cool interaction that he actually talks when some Pork's map is played. Never seen that. Five power. Two dusk. Draw one. Trixie Tentacles, my glimpse. Um, okay. Um, sure. Oh, Tellstones. We're still going, we're still going. Bull Elmduck. Okay. And then the Aftershock goes away. Very nice. They misplayed the Tellstones. Ezreal number two. Um. Yeah, we just darkness them, right? Ain't nothing wrong with a little darkness first action. Signpost. I see what you're doing here. That's kind of cute. Um, let's wallop them then. Put that back in my hand. Okay, and then they get next action attack. If they so desire. They do. They definitely desire that. Um, we'll definitely block here. I could probably go to 11 and not mind too much. I don't want to damage my Vagar because he's currently my only win con. Go ahead and finish off the Ezreal. Okay, we get a new one. New Darkness. Play Nora. That galley bar doesn't work. Nice try, very cute. Actually, this is attack. Bonk. Hmm, yeah, like I could darkness in a couple turns, but I also don't want to die, because I can't block these guys. Sentinel's nice, darkness, darkness. Yeah, we're in darkness face on this one. And then each tally sentinel, and then darkness one of these. Darkness face. Oh, another song spinner. All right. I mean, they already cost zero anyways, so I guess just go ahead. Gruesome theater. Recall a unit. Um, I kind of don't want you to do that. Although I guess I don't care. Because I get next action each Tali Sentinel. And then Aloof Travelers draws me a card and I lose a Vengeance, which I don't need. Yeah. That literally does not matter. So now we can do Darkness on this. That'll deal an additional 6 to face and then we win uh, next turn. With another Darkness call. We finally have them on lockdown it feels like. Even though they just drew a bunch of cards. Or... They have a bunch of playable cards. Okay. This card's the weakest follower? I ain't got none of those. 
Nice try. Alright, I think we finally got him. Darkness, go. A little bit of a Vagar win con. You like to see it. Alright, and the third and final deck I have for you today is Katarina Leona, which is a deck that has come up out of absolutely nowhere just this patch and has been tearing it up. With a win rate of 56.89% and a play rate of 1.71%, it is an extremely scary dark horse in the meta. Its best matchups are Jin Annie, Lurk, Zed Hecarim Ephemerals, and also Aurelia Gwen combo. The worst matchups that it's going to have to deal with is Swain Nora, Leona Aphelios, Heimer Nora, and Leona Diana, so a little bit of control, a little bit of really powerful mid-range value there. Now going into the list specifically, it'll look like a very aggressive deck with the Noxus opener of Crimson Pigeon, Legion Rearguard, and Legion Saboteur. It's a nice 9 card package for Noxus that just gets thrown in um, aggro everywhere. We also have Solari Soldier coming in from Targon, which is a 1 mana 3 3 the turn you play him, so that rounds out our 12 1 drops. The deck wants to play super aggressive, play units on curve, very powerful units indeed, and then swing uh, later on, and then also have a little bit of Noxion Fervor and Decimate Burn Lethal. So it's like an aggressive mid-range deck, it wants to find its wins like turns 6 through 8, but it has a little bit of burn reach to get there. So talking about the rest of the cards, we have Pale Cascade to win combat and to draw cards, uh, Solari Shieldbearer and Solari Sunhawk and Twilight Protector as our two drop Daybreaks. We want to Daybreak as much as we can, so like once a turn with the Solari Soldier, then a two drop, then another one of these on three, or Sun Guardian on three, and then something on four, and then Leona on five, and then we're good to go. So other than our Daybreak cards, we also have two Katarina. Now I'm running two Cat and one Darius because I think three Cat is a little bit redundant, and having a potential Darius swing in the mid and late game is very good for this deck because that's what you're playing towards. So you can do a really nice nasty curve like Daybreak early game and then Leona on 5 into Darius on 6 and you should be in a really good position. So yeah, only 2 Katarina because her champ spell is pretty bad, especially in an aggro deck where you want to be swinging a lot of times. Usually using this is pretty meh. So we're going to go ahead and run 2 Cat, 1 Darius for this list. And then we also have the Noxion Fervor, again a little bit of burn reach. The Sun Guardian. If we set this up, this is actually a very powerhouse style card. You just play a Daybreak after it, play another one, you know, like Leon on 5, and this thing just gets out of control. It starts as a 3-3-4, which is already a premium stat line, and then it only gets scarier from there. And then we also have the Leona, of course, Daybreak Stun and also Challenger, and Ravun. So that way it's always day, so you can play multiple Daybreak cards in the mid late game for big pushes and big stun turns and then Darius, and then Decimate. So yeah, it's an aggressive deck in a way, but it's also mid-range, and the main way that it's trying to win is actually building up board pressure. So it wants to build a board, play really big units, play big stat lines, and win that way through multiple attacks and through stun value. So it's pretty interesting, it's pretty cool. Highly recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it yet. It is gaining popularity by the day. And that's it for this quick deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. Alright, for the example game, we got Sejuani Gwen, which is an Overwhelm deck that also uses Hallow. Very scary. I love this deck. I play it quite often myself. Uh, we also have a really strong Daybreak hand. We actually just have Leona leveled on 5. We're playing attack evens, so Leona doesn't come down on attack 5. She'll come down on attack 6. Um, but yeah, this is a completely keepable hand. Play Solari Soldier on 1, prevent some damage from Boisterous. Then we can play Shieldbearer on 2. There's our Boisterous, yep. Yep, can't attack anymore, and then we'll play our Shield Bearer. Uh, boom. We can swing with that. We can probably swing with both if we want. Nah, just this one. Yep. Go ahead and take that. Then they play something, I can Sunhawk. We also have another Soldier, that's pretty good. Butler. Yeah, let's just Sunhawk. That way only one unit is attacking. We can block it with our Fearsome Blocker. We can actually play the Solari Soldier as well. Since we already have the Daybreak. Because what I want to do this turn is open attack. Unless I get a really good top deck. Yeah, so we're going to open attack. That extra two damage is probably going to go a long way. Here we go. 
Even if Gwen comes down, they still have to play something next turn. Alright. That way we get our Daybreak stun. We should feel pretty good about this. So we'll do Leona on 5, and then Ravun on 6 with Crimson Pigeon. Hey, yo, what's going on here? Open attack. Inner Beast, okay. Ow. Leona. Ah, boom. Yeah, we can get a lot of stuns next turn, actually. Because of Morning Light. Morning Light is going to be super clutch. Spirits Unleashed. That's fine. Yep. Alright. You're going to see right quick how good our stun value is on attack turns and why it's so scary. Play Ravun. Hey, yo. So that's a quick stun. Then we'll play Crimson Pigeon. They play something else, and then we'll Morning Light, generate us another card, and generate us a stun. Crimson Pigeon. Morning Light. Revan. Generate us another Daybreak card, please. Yep. Nice, another Sunhawk, so we just get the Prima stun, literally. And we'll do Crimson Pigeon here, popping the barrier. And we don't need to grab anything, we just put them down to 1 HP. So he can win through Decimate as well. Ah. We also have Fervor Lethal. Leave nothing standing. Bop, bop. Let's go ahead and block like this. Not really scared of too much at 10. Obviously we don't have to worry about Atrocity or anything like that. Another Stance Swap. That's pretty chill. I mean, we could do Fervor now. We could do literally whatever we want, but I'm just going to go into the Decimate. Yep, and if we magically had to go into our next attack turn, we have like five stuns. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Got him. Overall, the meta is looking pretty wild, with new decks reaching all time highs and players scattering to find the proper outs. It shouldn't be too long before things shake out entirely, especially with seasonals right around the corner. It's a good idea to hop on and learn what the best decks are. Also, stay away from Rise if you value your LP. This has been Meta Report. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!